Hi oh, guys, <clears throat> it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the top beautiful day, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous, what is it? Uh, it is a Friday morning, it is Friday, April 8th, 2022, I believe, and it looks like the sun is just hitting the camera to put this, uh, this godly aura around uh, my head here. And, uh, anyway, and of course, there has not been one breath of wind today. Not one breath of wind. I set up this camera, and uh, anyway, guys, it is what it is. But it is a gorgeous Friday. And the collapse of global industrial civilization in the great state of Texas, where, of course, which that means is there are major picking parties going on all over the place out here. And the little dog and I need to get out and play some music with our lovable, clueless, normie friends while we still can. I highly suggest you get out there and play some music with your own lovable clueless normie friends while well, you still can but since it is Friday morning it is time for us to check in with you know who it is time for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where uh, excuse me little dog uh, we check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com while uh, while the doom is spheres attention is riveted to the latest dire, damning, stark, watered down, greenwashed, do nothing report from the United Nations. <clears throat> let's see if Rhett, I'm sure Rhett will have some comment on that, but let's uh, check in with all of the other various ways the planet is collapsing with no help from uh, the United Nations. Gotta move my little giraffe. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> take it away. And uh, I have not even had time to go over these. So this is just as they roll off the Rolodex and we're gonna skip over the, uh, we're gonna skip over the hopium uh, they actually have the H word in the very first sentence about how a new smartphone app is going to bring <laughs> for sea turtles. We're going to save sea turtles with a smartphone app. Uh, but anyway, I just said we were not going to deal with that. Anyway, uh, okay, we have not checked in with the cocaine snorters on the planet. I am quite sure I will be spending the weekend with uh, several uh, clueless, lovable cokeheads this weekend. All coked up the global environmental impacts of cocaine. Cocaine is one of the most widely used illicit drugs in the world consumed by an estimated 20 million people, mostly in North America and Europe. Production, transit, and consumption of cocaine are exacting a heavy environmental toll, impacting tropical forests, freshwater, and estuary ecosystems. Some of these effects such as pollution impacts on aquatic species have been documented, but most are still poorly understood. Yes. Uh, anyway, the cocaine trade, along with the marijuana trade and every other trade, taking down the planet. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about a tree that you have never heard of. I'm going to go down to Brazil and check out the Alcaria tree. 
they outlived the dinosaurs, but Brazil's Alcaria trees might not survive humans. Yes, the Araucaria tree of Brazil's Atlantic forest, like every other tree in the Atlantic forest and the Amazon forest for that matter, could go extinct within the next 50 years due to permissive state policies allowing them to be cleared. The species is already listed as critically endangered. There is a ban on the logging of Aracana. Uh, nonetheless, two state governments still allow them to be felled in the thousands of public works projects uh, taking down the planet. Uh, they now occupy 2% of their historic range. The species has been around for more than 200 million years, surviving the last mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs, but, but, could meet its doom thanks to humans. All right. Uh, okay. Well, y you know, this is sort of a true statement. Reaching the Paris Agreement without protecting indigenous lands is impossible says report. Uh, well guys, I got some bad news. Uh, reaching the Paris Agreement uh, with or without, with or without, uh, protecting indigenous lands is impossible, says anybody with a brain. I'm all for protecting indigenous lands it has nothing to do with making the uh, Paris Agreement goals possible. Okay, what's going on with wildflowers and the pollinators that pollinate them? A first of its kind experimental study has found that climate change reduces the abundance of wildflowers and causes them to produce less nectar and fewer and lighter seeds. These changes in turn impact pollinating insects visiting the flowers. They have to visit more flowers more frequently to gather the required food. Fewer flowers, in turn, imply reduced reproductive fitness in plants, as well as fewer food resources for animals that rely on these plants for food, habitat, and shelter. Yes, that is how that climate feedback loop works. Uh... All right. Well, this is some hopium, but uh, I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna go and say this one I'm okay with. Wild bison uh, will once again roam England. This year, a project is about to release a herd of bison in an ancient English woodland, bringing back an animal that has not been in the country for millennia. There you go. Uh, I don't know. Are they bring? No, I guess. I guess these really are European bison. I didn't know there were any European bison. Uh, I thought they were bringing them over from the U.S., but I guess not. Okay, little dog. I don't know what you just did to my computer. All right. This is in Manga Bay's YouTube of the week. They're making the attempt to teach journalists and writers how to cover reforestation. Good luck on that one. Uh, you will not believe this uh, 
this earth-shaking headline. We'll not believe it. Countries that sanctioned Myanmar's junta are still buying their timber despite sanctions imposed following the February 2021 coup. Myanmar exported more than $190 million worth of timber, including two countries that have sanctions on the country's state-controlled timber monopoly. According to some new report, the continued trade highlights the challenges of effectively enforcing sanctions. Yes. Uh, Anyway, I can't, I don't have any, uh, oh, we're finally, we do have some corona panic that finally, uh, at least a lot of these conservation, all of these various uh, conservation studies all over the damn planet from the Amazon to Antarctica that were put on the shelf over this corona panic crap. Uh, finally, uh, a few of these field researchers are actually gonna get out there and uh, get back to uh, chronicling the collapse of a planet that uh, these uh, planet eaters can no longer use the bullshit excuse of the corona panic. Uh, okay, I know you've been wondering, how much does air travel warm the planet? I'm sure the conspiracy wackos would want to know how much air travel cools the planet. Let me try to move this camera out of the out of the sun. You can go on and go do whatever you want to do, little dog. I'm going to try to move this camera where it's not quite as blinding. All right. Anyway, so I guess that's some more hopium. Anytime uh, we can uh, get back to normal. Anyway, how much does air travel warm the planet? Researchers have calculated that aviation contributes about 4% to human induced global warming. Uh, when jet fuel burns, it produces CO2 as well as non-CO2 emissions, including nitrogen oxide, soot water vapor, and sulfate aerosols. So, you know, these conspiracy wackos seeing the water vapor trails, thinking they are the sulfate aerosols. Uh, anyway, all of which interact with the atmosphere and have an effect on the climate in different ways. Uh, although the development of sustainable aviation fuels has received much attention and funding, many experts, or anyone with a brain, says it is not feasible to create the amount of jet fuel needed and it is not the best use of land. Yes. Uh, the most effective solutions to reducing both the climate and health impacts of aviation is to stop flying. There you go. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Uh, here we go. This uh, here. here. <laughs> Do with this one what you want. Genetically modified fish 
engineered to glow in the dark are found in Brazil's creeks. A recent study shows that a genetically modified zebra fish known as a glowfish have been found and are breeding in the creeks in Brazil's Atlantic forest. Uh, glowfish are readily available for sale online. Uh, Brazilian biologists have, I guess we could say now, had called for measures to prevent these genetically modified fish from escaping fish farms and entering into local bodies of water. Yes. All right. Uh, I guess in Indonesia, the fires have not even started yet, and they're already declaring a state of emergency before the first fire. Yes, almost every year, vast swaths of Southeast Asia are covered in toxic haze, which causes air quality to reach hazardous levels and creates major health, environmental, and economic problems. Yes. Uh, so, these governors in Sumatra uh, has declared an emergency alert status over the fires that have not started yet. All right, anyway. Uh, More hopium, we're gonna skip over. Uh, anyway, this is, uh, anyway, that's too complicated to get into. Uh, here is, how about protecting water by conserving forests? There you go. How about that for a wild idea? Uh, talking about uh, water wars, intertribal water wars. Uh, gee, didn't we just have this one last week? Or is this another one? You will not believe this. How many times have we heard this story? Would you believe that a palm oil firm that cleared a New Guinea forest after losing its permit is still at it? I think that we, uh, I don't know if this is the same one from, the, it all runs together. Uh, they are still at it long after the government ordered uh, the planet eaters to halt land clearing activities. Do you think so? Here is an article about airplanes, well I guess birds running into airplanes. Lord, how about fly less? All right, this is their uh, their spin. This is Manga Bay's their review of uh, their review of this IPCC report. Uh, anyway, I think we've been over enough of those reviews, so. Uh, that is manga bays, but we're going to move on. Uh, okay. You've heard about uh, sunscreen, you know, killing uh, cool, cool wool reefs. Now they're also finding that sunscreen, these clueless moron eco tourists, their sunscreen is also uh, killing seagrass. 
Yes. This discovery is raising concerns about the potential effect on important seagrass ecosystems. Yep, yep, yep. Uh... All right. Here's an ironic one. For Indonesians, palm oil is everywhere except on supermarket shelves. Indonesia is the world's top producer of palm oil, but has in recent months been hit by scarce supplies and high prices for vegetable oil. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, anyway, here is the latest story on uh, these new BS carbon deals. Uh, this is Papua New Guinea's government is working to create new regulations governing volun voluntary carbon schemes which are arrangements negotiated directly between developers and resource owners. Can you say the fox guarding the hen house? These damn carbon trading schemes. Uh, anyway, it is anybody believe that greenwashing crap about carbon trading? More news about the online illegal wildlife trade continuing to soar. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, here's one about pesticides killing honeybees in Costa Rica. Do you think so? looking at these beekeepers in Costa Rica whose home has become surrounded by plantations growing monocultures of pineapple, cassava, and oil palm. When these crops are sprayed with pesticides, bees often die. Do you think so? How many orangutans does one billion dollars save? A recent study of value, evaluating spending on orangutan conservation calculated to amount to more than one billion dollars over the past 20 years found wide variations in the cost effectiveness you know, of saving orangutans by throwing money at them. Uh, take a wild guess the best way to throw money at orangutan uh, conservation is to protect their habitat. Habitat protection is by far the most effective measure. Yep, yep, yep. From orangutans to gorillas, saving Nigeria's gorillas, there, there is a knee slapper. Uh, I am absolutely shocked that one gorilla still survives in Nigeria. Saving Nigeria's gorillas was also meant to help human communities. It hasn't. Anyway, uh, the bottom line of this is with few alternatives and a growing population, a growing population of humans, meaning a catastrophic decline in the population of gorillas. Yes, with few alternatives, a, a, 
and a growing population of humans in Nigeria, people describe becoming ever more dependent on forest and wildlife to survive regardless of their personal feelings about conservation and apes. I assure you that the ever-growing uh, human population of Nigeria, especially as the, uh, you know, these food handouts to Sub-Saharan Africa being uh, dried up because of this war in Ukraine, you better believe that bushmeat is going to skyrocket when uh, all of these human parasites that never should have been born are, are not going to be able to get these free handouts from Honky anymore. Uh-oh, uh I need to remember what channel I am on, but you know, I think you know what I'm saying, and I realize I'm talking to myself at this point, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and finish it out. Uh, so, all of this talk uh, about this global food crisis is the number one story on the mainstream media that uh, where do you think uh, all of this stuff, uh, all of this, the food and the food aid comes from? A huge amount of it uh, comes from uh, Russia and Ukraine that is 100% dried up uh, the price is skyrocketing, and take a wild guess uh, what humans are going to suffer the most. It is sub-Saharan Africans. Okay, and if they don't have these food handouts, uh, and, and, and you have to feed your family of seven children in Nigeria uh, that should never have been born, and, and there's a nice plump gorilla to go into the stew pot, or, or, or you're going to watch your children starve uh, because they can't go down to the local U.S. food aid center and, and, and pick up a bag of whatever, uh, where do you think the gorillas are going? despite their personal feelings for uh, conservation in apes. They're going in the stew pot. And this is exactly uh, what Bill Gady was pointing out and I think the last interview I ever had on Collapse Chronicles. Exactly what Bill was talking about. Uh, that the sixth mass extinction is going to come from humans uh, beginning in sub-Saharan Africa is where it's going to start literally eating every single, every single individual one of our fellow earthlings. And when they run out of gorillas to eat uh, in Nigeria, which my guess, if, if, there, if there's a gorilla in, in, uh, in Nigeria in 10 years, uh, I, I will be absolutely flabbergasted when there's no more gorillas to put in the stew pot, when you're down there in Madagascar uh, and there's no more lemurs to put in the stew pot, uh, what is going to go in the stew pot? Anyway, I'm just, uh, we're, we're just going to wrap it up there, guys. I think I've made my point. But uh, all of this talk about stewed gorilla is getting me hungry, and I need to go uh, find out what sort of uh, factory farmed fellow earthling of mine I'm going to go throw into the stew pot and head off to a potluck picking party with my clueless, lovable friends. There is a nice uh, plump deer. That deer would be damn good in a stew pot. Sancho Panza, do you want to go uh, get us some fresh venison? Anyway, I have to go throw some venison in the stew pot. Bye, guys. How many giraffes are in the stew pot in sub-Saharan Africa? Giraffes headed into the stew pot. Bye, guys.